In this part of the problem, we're going to find out the, uh, the various properties of this wave function here, specifically the wave fun the time dependent wave function itself and the magnitude squared of the wave function. So we'll go ahead and begin right here. Uh, this one's relatively simple. If you recall that any wave function, full wave function, the time dependent portion, is just a linear combination of some spatial portion um, multiplied by the time dependent portion, each one this corresponds to a different energy level uh, sub m, right? Where each time dependent portion right here is equal to this exponential corresponding to some energy level e sub n right here. So these exist right here since this is a time equals zero. Each one of these has a one multiplied by it, like a hidden one and the reason why it's one is because each one of these uh, t's is equal to zero so it just turns this entire energy term equal to zero no matter what it happens to be so in order to find out the full time dependent form of this wave function all we really need to do is just tack on the exponential to each one of those constituent linear combinations so if we go ahead and add this to all of them we have one fifth because when we did the earlier part of the problem, we, we solved for this normalization constant here. So if we throw the exponentials, so each one of these could, corresponds to each different energy level. So this is going to be energy level zero. And then this linear portion of the linear combination is going to correspond to the energy level E sub one. And that's it for our wave function. Now, when we move on to the wave function squared, it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to have to do some foiling for this. So actually, let's go ahead and just copy and paste this for the sake of time. There we go. All right. Magnitude squared. So this next step, we'll just go ahead and pull out this one fifth magnitude squared since we know that is a real number and then the next portion uh, we can go ahead and find the foiling process out so whenever we do the magnitude squared of some wave function it's just the complex conjugate times the wave function that exists itself so we'll go ahead and do that for this glob of stuff here so let's see here we have a quantity squared of this is this which is the complex conjugate of the spatial portion and then the complex conjugate of the exponential is going to be a positive exponential here and we'll do the same thing for the other portion okay oops forgot the complex conjugate there now we just go ahead and do this whole next chunk here so let's let's do this okay and of course we gotta turn these negatives into or positives into negatives here we go now it begins the foiling process we'll drop that 120 1 over 25 down so we'll do, just go ahead and foil out all these terms. So one thing that's important to note is that this, since that is the, the spatial portion is a, is, has no complex terms in it, that is just simply equal to psi sub zero squared. Whenever this hits one of these or whatever they, these uh, uh, different positive negative exponentials that correspond to the same energy levels hit each other they just become one so I'll just make that explicit by doing times one right there and I'll go ahead and apply that to the rest of these Running out of room here, but that's okay. We'll just drop down to this portion. 
and then that's just going to be one. All right, let's scroll up a little bit. Okay. Drop the 125th down. All right, now let's just go ahead and drop this one down too. All right, so one thing that's important to note is that the difference between each adjacent energy level, so between the ground state and the first state, and then let's say the first state and the second state, um, the difference between the energy levels for the sample harmonic oscillator are always going to be h bar over or h bar omega, right? So when whenever we do the difference between these two, those are going to be difference of h bar omega here. So we can just go ahead that and write that down. Let's see. Uh, all right h bar omega over h bar do some housekeeping before we move on all right the next term and then let's see here i h bar oops sorry that is a t times h bar omega over h bar do some housekeeping there we go and then we have our 16 term right here all right so now if you can see that or actually let's go ahead and move on to the next step and, and make sure it's just more explicit I don't like to skip too many steps here okay so let's see here 12 h bar we'll combine these two terms here bring them together with the exponentials so let's see here um, e to the oh like this we factor out a 12 12 uh, psi sub 1 psi sub 0 and all that's left is a two exponentials being summed together on the inside here one's positive one's negative you might be able to see where I'm going I'm gonna try to massage out a specific trigonometric identity here which is just two cosine omega t right for these uh, uh, two exponentials here pretty common one that comes up a lot in physics turning exponentials into uh, uh, sines and cosines the reason why that's usually nice to do because it really highlights the um, like the harmonic motion of things that exist so now we have our size of zero size of one cosine omega t and then our 16 term here here we go magnitude squared of the wave function